I'm Trish Barker. I'm the Public Information Officer for the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. The Blue Water Supercomputer, uh, it's really only two years old, but it has a history that goes back quite a bit further. Uh, initially, it was just an idea. It was just a proposal. The National Science Foundation knew that people all across the country needed a larger supercomputer to do more detailed research and to be able to learn things that they couldn't with the tools that were available at that time. In order to make a supercomputer, it's, it's really not one thing that just rolls off an assembly line, boom, it's a supercomputer. It's a lot of smaller components connected together. And in the case of Blue Waters, it's hundreds of thousands of processors. They happen to be AMD processors and also some graphics processing units, plus an interconnect that makes all of those processors really work together, um, enables them to quickly communicate with one another, pass information back and forth. So instead of just working independently, they're all effectively working as a team. Now we have a system that can do quadrillions of calculations every second. In one second, the supercomputer does a number of calculations that you would need individually millions of years to complete if you had a calculator. The building here, the National Petascale Computing Facility, was really specifically designed for the care and feeding of supercomputers. And um, that means electrical power. That means cooling systems because, of course, uh, computer processors generate a lot of heat that we don't really need and we need to get rid of. So it's a large building that mostly exists to take care of computer systems. There aren't a lot of people who need to be in the building. And in fact, the entire first level of our facility is devoted to that infrastructure. It's electrical transformers that bring in the electrical power. It's um, pumps and heat exchangers and pipes that bring in the chilled water so that we can cool the computer down. All of that is really essential. We've got a 20,000 square foot machine room. Um, that's the room where Blue Waters and all of the data systems, all of the networking systems are located. Blue Waters itself takes up more than 5,000 square feet. So it's way bigger than your average home in the United States. At peak level, Blue Waters uses around 10 megawatts roughly what a small town of 10,000 people would use. Um, so one supercomputer is roughly equivalent to a small town, uh, and that's one of the reasons that it's important that that investment is really being used wisely. People all across the country have the opportunity to use Blue Waters, and for the most part, they can use it for free. They don't even have to pay any money for it. About 80% of the capacity of the system is doled out by the National Science Foundation. So they get proposals from people all around the country, from the University of Illinois and lots of other universities all across the country. And people explain why they need to use the supercomputer, what they want to use it for. And 7% of the capacity on the system is actually reserved for our campus. So 7% is just for the staff and the students and the faculty here at the University of Illinois to use. There's also a pathway for people to use it for educational projects. So say you're in a computer science class or maybe a chemistry class, and that professor decides it would be really cool for you to get the opportunity to use Blue Waters and do a little bit of research, that's absolutely an option. We also do have some companies we work with. They like to come to us and take advantage of the expertise we have and sometimes take advantage of the cool toys we have to play with so they can do some work with those. Um, so we work with companies like Boeing and Rolls-Royce and Procter and & Gamble, and they do have to pay money. Things are not free for those companies. We sometimes get a little caught up in talking about how many processors it has and how fast it is and things like that. That's interesting, but ultimately that's all in service of the research that people are able to do. Klaus Schulten here at the Beckman Institute on campus has conducted some research on HIV. For the very first time using Blue Waters, they were able to determine the chemical structure of this protein capsule that encases the virus. We also have research that goes on having to do with tornadoes and hurricanes, how these severe weather events evolve, what the key features are that really lead to the formation of a tornado. So things that potentially in time could lead to better warning systems for people. It's fascinating to me how all of these people in different fields 
come up with ways that they can apply this particular resource and that it's not limited to just one field of science, that it is all of these people across all of these different domains and disciplines who figure out a way to use this same tool. It's interesting to talk about how big it is and how powerful it is. Um, and it's great to be able to brag that the University of Illinois has something like this when you really won't find this at any other university. We are really alone in a class of our own when it comes to supercomputing. But ultimately what really matters is what people can do with it.